Hello Interwebs, welcome to Let's Fix Computers. Uh, I'm doing a tutorial today of stuff you guys have seen me do many times before, but I'm going to try and do a bit more of a structured video on this one. And this is how to deal with a laptop with broken hinges. Um, because this is really common and I've done lots of videos on repairing these. So let's go through it once again. And this time it's going to be hopefully a step-by-step -step process. Um, so you guys, so when someone is just like, uh, how do I do this? I could be like, okay, here's an actual how-to kind of thing, not just a video of me doing it. So um, I'm going to be doing this on this HP laptop. Uh, the model number, just to be specific on this one, uh, this is a HP 15-BS series. Um, this is a really common fault on HP laptops, especially. All like mo a lot of modern laptops are susceptible to this issue because modern laptops are built like crap. Um, however, HP seem to be particularly bad for this. Don't know why it's just the way it is. Uh, in any case, this is what we're working on. So, step one assess the damage. We have to see exactly what has broken and what needs to be replaced. So um, the bits that I'm looking for now are, uh, as you can see on this particular one, uh, we're broken on both hinges here. Usually only one side is broken. However, when one side breaks, the other one has got to take the full force of everything. So it probably won't be far behind. So we've got two hinges to replace here. Then I want to check the cables. So once it's gotten this bad where both the hinges are broken and the, cu the customers continue to try and use the laptop, it's not uncommon to see damage to the cables to follow. And these cables, there's a couple of marks on them where they've been pinched in places. However, looking at both sides, none of the cables have been severed, none of them are, there's no exposed copper or anything like that. This does make this not as bad as it can be. If you've got broke damage to these wires, that means you're going to have to start replacing wireless antennas and display cables. And while that doesn't make this job any harder, it just makes it more expensive because small fittings like um, hinges, cables and stuff like that are annoyingly expensive to buy on eBay. Like if you want to buy, if you want to buy some new Wi-Fi antennas for this laptop, like without looking at eBay, I would expect to be paying at least £20. Now that doesn't sound like a huge amount of money, but you're paying 20 quid for some antennas, which is just some bits of wire. And like, if your display cable is damaged, that's probably going to be another 20 quid. Your hinges are going to cost you 20 or 30 pounds. The back panel is going to cost you probably 40 or 50 pounds. The price is spiraling, man. You know, so you see why it's an issue. However, in this, in, in this case, both the hinges are broken, the cables are intact. Fine. Okay. So, where have they broken off from? These hinges have broken off from the display assembly. So uh, underneath here, on this particular one, I can just open this up because it's already broken off anyway. If I just remove this bezel, I'll just gently pick that up. You can see where these have broken off of the back here. So this top lid, it's called the lid, uh, needs to be replaced. So that needs to be replaced and the hinges have snapped off from the strut bars going up the side of the screen here. So the strut bars, which are all part of the hinges, also need to be replaced. So we need a new set of hinges and a new top lid. In addition to that, we need to check the inside body of the laptop. So what I'm going to do now is we're going to, um, uh, we're going to take the back panel off and we're going to inspect the inside of the laptop. Um, this needs to be done anyway because uh, we need to um, we need to remove we need to disconnect all the cables and stuff to be able to fix it anyway. So you're going to have to take your laptop apart one way or the other. So I'll start by removing the battery, and I'm going to very carefully work just leaning on the back lid here. So just be careful where you're pressing and just be mindful of it. On this laptop, uh, as with a lot of HPs, there are hidden screws. We've got a couple of visible ones here, 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 and here. Then there's going to be hidden screws under these two feet and possibly these two. So I'm just going to check one of these first to see if there's a screw there. There is, so I need to do both. What I recommend doing is just peeling back these feet and then immediately sticking them down next door. 
uh, because that means that A, you won't lose the foot, and B, it preserves the stick uh, on it. And 99 times out of 100, you, you don't have to apply any new adhesive to these. As long as you just stick them back down on a clean plastic surface, they won't get lost and they won't go non-sticky. So the screwdriver I'm using is a Phillips Zero, so P0. A Phillips One will probably do the job as well. You don't have to have an electric one, obviously. It just makes my life a bit quicker. So next, I need to remove the bottom case. On most modern laptops, all of the inside of the laptop is attached to the top case, which is also known as the palm rest, which is this keyboard and palm rest bit here. Um, so uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go around the edges of the laptop with my prying tool and just pop the lid off. So I just need to balance the lid somewhere out the way where it's not going to hit my uh, computer keyboard. Whoop. There we go. And I'm just going to gently get my prying tool into this gap and just pry it off. There we go, I think that's the worst of it. So now what I want to do is flip it all over because the bottom is going to come off, not the top. So let's lift this up. Over we go. And I should just be able to lift that bottom case off now and just give it a bit of a wiggle in a few places. There we go. So now we've got that case off, we now want to disconnect the hinges at these ends to detach the display assembly or the rest of it. So I'm going to disconnect the wires going to the display. So we've got the display cable itself here, peel that bit of plastic back and then just ease that out. And I also need to get the wireless, ah, I also need to get the wireless antennas. So I'll just lift those upwards. Right, and the DC cable going from here to the charger jack is in the way of everything. So I'm going to unplug this guy just to give myself some room. Oh, is it going to make me? Yeah. It's tucked underneath the Wi-Fi card, so I guess that's coming out as well. There we go. And the last item of business is there is another silver cable. That's part of the display cable, that's fine. So it's just the two Wi-Fi antennas and the display cable. Good stuff. Right, so now I want to discon now I want to undo all the screws for the um, hinge. Uh, I also need to take off the fan to get to these, these guys. So just take out whatever you need to, to get to where you need to be. That's one hinge out. And that's the other hinge removed. So make sure to hang on to any screws that come out. Um, so here's obviously where the fasteners have broken out from the display. We want to make sure that we don't lose the screws because we're going to reuse those. We don't need the fasteners because they're broken, but the screws we do want to keep. Cool. So in this case, these points have not broken, so we don't need to replace any of this. We're basically just looking for wherever there are broken screw holes and where we see broken screw holes means we've got to replace parts. If like we've got three here, uh, well we've got four here total, if one of these was broken you'd probably get away with that because you've still got three of the four screws holding it all together. However if like two or three of them are broken you're going to need to replace it otherwise it's just going to snap again. Uh, and it's no good if, I mean, if you're DIYing it, that might be a choice that you want to make. However, if you're fixing someone else's laptop, you don't want to see it again in a week with the same problem. 
So, right, now we've got the rest of the display assembly off, we're left with this. I know that we're going to be ordering parts next, so I'm going to put this down here and I'm just going to gently put stuff vaguely into place and put the bottom case back on just for safekeeping because this is going to go on the shelf for at least a few days now. So I'm just going to put a few things back in place. We're going to have to take it out again, but that's no problem. It didn't take very long. So now we've got the display assembly. I'll just take the last of the uh, bezel off. Just very gently go around and pop that guy out. So I'm not going to strip this guy down yet because I don't have the parts. But again, what I want to do is just get a visual look at the, uh, the shape of the um, screw pattern here. And now what we're going to do is we're going to hit up eBay for some spare parts. So let me get my keyboard. So step two in this repair is to source parts. So we know what parts we need now. We need a new top lid and we need new hinges. So I'm going to go to eBay to get my parts. Now the reason why I use eBay is because in the UK they're a pretty solid supplier for secondhand or brand new laptop spares. Uh, if you are not in the West, you might have hard, a harder time finding stuff on eBay. But also, if you're not in the West, then AliExpress is probably more viable. Uh, AliExpress is generally going to be the cheapest. The reason why I don't use them is because delivery time from uh, China to the UK is normally about three weeks or so. Now, I don't want to wait three weeks for parts. Uh, eBay will be a little bit more expensive, but it provides me parts within... To, you know, one to three days, which is far more acceptable. So uh, I'm going to type in the model number. So we had a HP 15-BS and I'm going to put start with hinges. So I'm going to put in hinges. 15-BS hinges and we've got options here already. So first, as you can see, we've got sets of hinges on their own. And the other useful thing is this fault is so common these days that people sell kits. Uh, so right here, we've got top lid, back cover, and frame and bezel, and hinges, all as a single thing. So let's take a, that's, uh, let's take, I'm gonna open that in a new tab. It's not necessarily the cheapest option, but let's have a quick look at that. So uh, color, we, this one was white. Nope, silver. So we want silver. Oh, of course the silver one is more expensive. Fine. Okay, so that would be 46 quid for the whole lot, for the full kit. Let's see if we can buy them separately for cheaper. Uh, right, so 15-BS hinges, 585. When eBay shows up that great price sticker, that generally means it probably is a good price. I found that that's quite accurate, that badge. So let's see if those are a match. So we're going to open the picture and have a look. And looking at... Yeah, so let's switch back to the bench cam. So have a look down here, look at the arrangement of the holes. And as you can see, that lines up with what we've got on our broken left hand hinge here. So those hinges are correct. So those are the right hinges. Here's a slightly cheaper ch kit at 38.95. Have they got that in silver? No, they don't. See, the black one is slightly cheaper because it's uh, less common. Fine, okay. I'm gonna roll with that. Let's see what we can do for a top lid. So HP 15BS lid. So 30 pounds, God, it's a bit of plastic, man. The cost of top lids makes me cry. Uh, 36, 38. Looks like 36 is the best price we're going to see. Right, so 36.50 plus six quid for the hinges means that 46 pounds for the kit is actually on point. So as you can see, by the time we've messed about finding them all separately, the actual kit is it, that also comes with a new front bezel as well, which we don't need, but it does mean that um, any scuff marks that are on the front bezel we can replace so it looks nice and shiny and new as well. It's a nice little extra. Um, so that is as good as we're going to get. If we jumped on AliExpress, you know, let's just check AliExpress just to see if we're getting ripped off. And by the looks of things, prices are very similar. Ah, here's a big kit here. 
what do we get for this? So color, if I want silver, oh uh, yeah, there you go. <laughs> it looks pretty cheap. And then if you say you want it in silver with the hinges, $55. What about just a silver lid? $24. Yeah, okay, so there you go. So we could get it slightly cheaper. We could go $24. Uh, let's just change that to GBP just so we've got it in the same price as all the rest, everything else I've been looking at. United Kingdom pound. Thirty-five. Oh God, Brexit, man. We got screwed. Whatever. Okay. So as you can see, even ordering directly from AliExpress, it still sucks. So yeah, this kit here at forty-six quid. That's as good as it's gonna get. So that's what I'm gonna buy. I'm gonna hit buy it now. So because you guys are time travelers from the future, I'll see you guys after the cut. But for me, it'll be in a few days. And just like that, we now have spare parts. So we've got our hinges here that are taped up. And in here, we've got a new top lid and we've got a new front bezel as well. So we didn't need the new front bezel, but it happened to come in the kit and it also means that we've got a nice shiny new one, uh, which we may or may not use. We'll see what condition the old one is in, basically. Um, so yeah, the next thing we've got to do now is build up this display assembly because it's all very well having this new top lid, but it's missing lots of things we need. We've got to put the LCD panel in there, but also we've got to transfer over stuff like the webcam and any other bits of wire and that kind of thing. So we need to do a little bit of assembly with this. So let's grab the old display assembly. And let's just see how much work we've got to do here. So firstly, the front bezel, I'm actually going to, this new one, where, where this is um, uh, aftermarket parts, this HP badge is kind of just stuck on. I've not seen this, I've not seen it look like this before. Is that actually as naff as it looks? Yeah, and it's kind of not straight. I don't like this bezel at all. I think I'm going to use the existing bezel because there's no meaningful damage to it anywhere. So we're going to reuse this one, I think, because it's nicer than the third party one that's arrived. And with that in mind, I'm just going to have a quick check on the back of the um, uh, lids and just check the condition of that. Yeah, that's fine. That's just as good as the original. Yeah, no problems there. Cool, okay. So, what we've got to do now, we need to transfer across the LCD. Um, the display cable will come with it, obviously. We've got two Wi-Fi antennas here and here, and the webcam. So, this is okay. There's not a huge amount to do here. The first thing I would actually do is make sure you just pay attention to how the wires are routed through the old display assembly, because uh, uh, when you get a lot of wires in a display assembly, it can start getting really confusing as to how exactly they're supposed to be arranged very quickly. So as you can see, all of our wires are going in underneath this through this central channel here. So the, the bit that I'm, that I'm paying attention to is the fact that they're not, they're not going inside there because that's where this sits and they're not going through there or anything like that. So right down the bottom, basically. Uh, so that'll do. In an ideal world, I'd like to see how they were rooted through here. However, this is all smashed up and we have no idea. So we'll just have to figure that out. Uh, but first, let's take all the stuff out from here. So I'm going to take out all the remaining screws from here and just put those to one side. And lift the LCD out. Right, we need to remove those Wi-Fi antennas ideally. So I'll just rearrange this and lay the LCD down to one side. Now these Wi-Fi antennas are just stuck in. So I'm just gonna get a prime tool underneath those and we'll just peel that back like that. 
and we'll be able to reuse this sticky back. That'll be fine for a second use. It's not like they're heavy or anything like that. Oh, there's also a strut bar up here. Is that a strut bar on the new one? It isn't. Uh, I will transfer that across as well, I think. So this strut bar is heat stakes in. Uh, is that going? The Wi-Fi antenna goes over the top of it, so we can still get that out. There we go. And now we can remove the uh, webcam as well, which again, will just have a little bit of uh, sticky on the back of it. There, that's the LCD and the display cable free. Uh, the Wi-Fi antennas will also come out now. And we'll get this strut bar because this strut bar will just be, rem uh, it will be, well, I don't know what it's doing actually. It doesn't look like it's doing anything to reduce flex in the display. Uh, I'll, I'll transfer it because I can. So I'm just going to jam my prying tool underneath this and we'll just break it out from those heat stakes. Like that. Okay, right, we're done with this now. Um, there are some bits of felt uh, or foam there but there's not much of it. I'm not going to bother transferring this across. I don't think it's doing anything for us. So now we'll get our new top lid and we'll start assembling this. So I'm going to start by putting this weird strut bar in. So I've just got my soldering iron just at 200 degrees now. There we go. And at 200 degrees, we melted the plastic, but we didn't vaporize it. And now what I'll do, because I've just used my soldering iron to melt plastic, I'm just going to whack the temperature back up on that, and I'm just going to retin the tip just so that plastic gets removed and doesn't stay and gum up my soldering iron tip. There we go. Nice and shiny again. So it's worth mentioning, these strut bars that you have to hot melt in, those aren't very common. I wouldn't expect to see that in the majority of laptops. So if you're looking at that going, oh, I can't do that, uh, don't panic. It's not something I'd expect to have to do on most. However, since we're doing this particular laptop, it did have it. Okay, that's one of the cables back in. Uh, where are we going now? Down there, I think. Right, that's one antenna done. Let's get the other in. That's the second. <clears throat> now we'll get the webcam in there. So the webcam obviously needs to be straight and if we look very carefully here, you can just see there's a little post sticking up there. And have we got a second one anyway? Yeah, and there's another little post sticking up there. And those correspond to holes in the webcam board. So if I get one of those lined up, that's the top right. And there's the bottom left. And that's how we know that that webcam is perfectly aligned in the center. And it's got just a little bit of stickiness to keep it in place. Once everything is put in on top of this, it's not going to fall out. So don't worry about that being held in super well. By the time we've got the rest of the display assembly in there, it'll be fine. And these cable channels are getting a little bit crowded now. So you might have a bit more trouble with this one. As you can see, I've just had to bring in the LCD panel as well. I could have disconnected the display cable from the back of the LCD. However, um, it wasn't really necessary to. I can just bring this in and it's fine, basically. 
What I will do though, the the foil ha um, uh, the foil bits on the back here, a lot of the holes have been punched out very well on this. So I'm just going to get some tweezers in there just to clear those holes. Otherwise, I'm going to have trouble getting the screws into places. Right, let's do our hinges. So don't try and open the hinges by bending these struts because they just bend. These struts are basically worthless. These used to be most of the strength of a laptop screen. Um, but now they're just bits of tin and I don't understand why they don't actually put proper strength in these things anymore. But th that's not what this video is about, so whatever. So I'll position that guy there and we need to, now is the time where we need to make sure that our cables are aligned perfectly. So I'm just gonna make sure that the display cable is properly in the channel down here. And that, where is that gonna go? It's gonna go along there. That's gonna come down there. There we go. And now that just sits on top of everything. And we'll just make sure that we don't squash any wires. This is a very tricky one to get settled just right. The, the wires do not want to go exactly into the channel. There we go. That's done the job. So now that's sitting absolutely flush. I'm going to get a screw in there right quick. Oh, and I don't have it to hand. All right, we'll just quickly recover some of these screws from the old hinges now. There we go. We'll get the others in in a moment. We're not going to panic about getting all of the screws in. I just want one in that just holds everything in place. If you're having trouble opening up the hinges, grab a screwdriver and stick it through one of the holes and then get another screwdriver and put it through another one of the holes. Just use them as opening arms. And it'll help you get these over because these things are astonishingly stiff when you're trying to open them by hand with no leverage on them. Right, this idiot dropped the screws while the laptop was in storage on the shelf. So I've had to just pick out a couple of spares from my spares tray. Don't drop the screws. There we go. Now we've got screws on all of that. So now I've got to put on these hinge covers again. And the right hand one, that's just going to screw back on. However, unfortunately, on the left hand one, the screw hole for it has actually snapped off. So I might have to get a bit inventive and just do what I can with that. Uh, it needs to go in a certain way as well. So I just need to make sure that that kind of slides in how it's supposed to. And I'm not sure how it's supposed to. All right, let's start from there. There we go, that did it. I just slid on. And now that's in place and that guy should just bend in. There we go. That looks good. And now this side has got cables going through it. Are we going all the cables out? I think we are. Yep, I remember the display cable came out from here. Good grief, there we go. So as you can see, we're missing the screw mount for this because that was snapped off. However, if I put this one in and I just slide in the bottom like we're supposed to, like that, when we put the front bezel on top of that, it's going to hold that down and this guy should stay in place. So let's take our front bezel now and that should go on. There we go. And we may just have to rerun just some of these gaps just to make sure they stay shut. There we go. Some nice decisive clicks there. And I'm just making sure all these gaps are closed. That's great. And there we go, one rebuilt display assembly. 
ready to go back in the laptop. Uh, so you could clean this screen now if you wanted to. Hell, you, we could have cleaned the screen while the front bezel was off. I actually prefer to do this when the laptop is built up, um, which doesn't really make a lot of sense. However, just uh, whenever I try doing it just on the bench like this, it feels messy. But when you clean the, the, the screen on the laptop when it's all built up again, it feels a lot easier. So make of that what you will. I'm going to get this thing fully built and then I'm going to clean it. So in comes the body of the laptop again. And we'll just lay that down. And we'll just hang everything off the edge of the counter. And just lay that down there. And we'll just make sure everything is aligned. So I need the two hinges to be at about the same angle. And the my left hand, which is actually the right hand hinge, but it's on my left. This is the one where it really matters that we get it lined up properly. So I'm just jiggling this around. Oh, I remember the fan needs to go on top of that. That's why it doesn't feel right. There we go. That's in, and the other side is in. There we go, that's done the job. That's sitting nicely, and now we can get that screwed in. And I'll put the screws in on the other side as well. There we go. Good. There we go. And before we put all the screws in, I'll just grab the battery and we'll just do a quick post test on that. Because the battery has been out of this laptop for a while, it may take a while to switch on again. There we go. And we've got, I've just been tapping the escape key just so it doesn't start booting up. So I don't have to wait for Windows to start up and shut down. Anyway, as you can see, we have a picture on the screen. So I'll turn that off again and we can now put all the screws in. And that's it, everyone. We're completely finished now. That is all rebuilt. We know it works. All that's left now is just to give the laptop a physical cleanup. So we'll do that and I'll let the credits roll. Uh, thank you very much for watching, everyone. Um, if you like my content, be sure to check out my support links in the description down below for my Patreon, my Discord, and my Twitter. Uh, or stick around for the end card, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Thank you very much. Bye for now.